Tonight on the edge, residents in Waterford are breathing a sigh of relief. Their power is back on. But it's a little consolation after two days in the dark. And as Fox 2's Dave Kinchin reports, neighbors want answers. I am literally getting sick to the point to where I will probably have to go to ER and praying that they don't admit me because on another spectrum, I can't afford to be in the hospital. That's how dire the power outage situation in the Waterford area has been for Sharon Jones. I'm depending on my electricity for my medical. I have cried, I'm hot, my body temperature, I don't have my medicine. And when I call DTE, the results I get from them is like I am scums of the earth. I need help. I'm reaching out for help. And that's exactly what I need. This is a picture of the freezer items she says she had to toss out. When I call the 800 number, they say, we'll give you $35. Well, that's an insult. That's a total insult to my intelligence. $35, are you kidding me? I gotta empty the freezer right now and throw away hundreds of dollars worth of food, all of my condiments, everything's gone. I put a bag of ice in the freezer last night and guess what? It's a puddle of water. Waterford and some surrounding areas went dark a few days ago, according to many residents, doing whatever they can to beat a heat wave that set in days after the unofficial start of summer. The lights were knocked out at many fast food shops and other businesses too, prompting them to close. DTE promised to have it on at 11 that night didn't happen. The next ETR was, I believe, Thursday at noon, then again at 6. Now today at noon, when I called at noon, they said today at 6, but they can't promise because the problem's underground. I mean, come on, you guys. And it like just came out of nowhere and, and like the whole, it was like the whole area, like everything was down. Like everybody came out their houses. You know, people got kids, like I got kids myself. Yeah, yeah. And you know, they can't like, you know, hot and stuff like that. So it was all just like a inconvenience. DTE told Fox 2 just after 8 p.m. Friday night, the lights are back on in Waterford. A spokesperson for the utility says crews were updating the primary cable underground when the backup failed, prompting the need for a workaround. And DTE says they also had to bring in a portable substation and generators to get that power back on. In Waterford, Dave Kinchin on the edge. A lot of us had lost appliances. Uh, I personally lost a fridge, stove, and a dishwasher. Meanwhile, some Ann Arbor residents are fuming after their appliances were fried when their power was restored. The outage was caused by a large tree that fell and damaged power equipment. About 100 customers were impacted. DTE says customers should first contact their homeowners or renters insurance. They can also file a claim with DTE. Well, things are getting loud in downtown Detroit. The Detroit Grand Prix is back. Fox 2's Camille Mary has a front row seat. She's live with more on uh, the big day, of course, and the biggest day that we're looking forward to is Sunday. That's when the big races happen. But Camille, the party started already. Oh my God, the party already started. We had awesome seats in the house, let me tell you. At turn three, take a look at what today had in store. After more than three decades, they are once again racing in the streets of downtown Detroit. Awesome day, beautiful day, uh, beautiful people, just a wonderful day. The Detroit Grand Prix, a Motor City tradition. I just want to be part of it, you know? Racing down Jefferson. Fans getting to see the action up close, so close, it almost doesn't feel real. It's amazing how fast they run and everything. You know, up close. It ain't like on TV. You got to come down and be in it, you know? For years, the Grand Prix was held on Belle Isle, but now that it's back in the heart of downtown, it has a different feel. And there are places where you could take in the action without even buying a ticket. But it is good to have it back downtown. This is the best place. I enjoyed it on Belle Isle, but downtown is the best place. Beautiful. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's just so beautiful. Just a wonderful day. I love the cars. And the grandsons couldn't agree more. We saw a lot of cars. They was awesome, and they was fun, and fast, and fast, and cool. And how fast were they going? 180. 180. 180. 
180. They probably are pretty accurate. Chief James White, Police Chief James White, actually changed the speed limit to 200 miles per hour on this stretch of Jefferson for this weekend only. And you got to love those little boys, too. They were not twins. They were brothers ages six and nine, I believe. But they literally finished each other's sentences the whole time we talked to them. So that was pretty awesome. They had a great time out here, and a lot of people are going to be down here this weekend. Beautiful weather. Couldn't ask for anything more. Ruth, yeah, Mom and Dad probably heard a lot on the car ride back. 180. That was 185. No, it was 180. That was great. Wasn't that awesome? Uh, they're excited, but we're all kids when it comes to the Indy style races. But the businesses here, they're really excited about this. People coming to downtown, sampling the foods, going around to the coffee shops, and really passing a great time. Yeah, and I mean, so many food trucks down here and so many people coming down here would, who wouldn't normally come downtown and then people who are actually experiencing the race for the first time. And like you said, Sunday is the big day, but we've got qualify, we've got practice, we've got so much excitement that you don't even have to come down here on Sunday if you can't make it. Ruth, right. back to you. Camille Lemire for us live, getting us pumped up tonight. Thank you. Well, it certainly has been amazing weather, and you just heard Camille talk about it as oh, well. Yeah. A great weekend for racing, but our recent heat wave will soon kind of tap out a little bit. Yeah, it's been nice. Tomorrow, though, there's a slight chance of storms across Metro Detroit. Weather Authority Stephanie Mead gives us a look at our Friday yeah. night weather. Hey, Stephanie. Yeah, hey, guys. It has been kind of a hot stretch for us, most certainly. Today, we actually tapped out at 90 degrees. That was our first day of 2023 of seeing those temperature at or above that 90 degree mark, and that was pretty much a trend we were seeing across the state from Lansing. Although way down to the Indiana, Michigan and Ohio state line. So everyone feeling that summertime heat. Luckily, it's not paired up with any high humidity levels, so it is bearable for right now. Temperatures mainly in the 70s as we head into our 11 o'clock hour here. 76 degrees in the Detroit metro area, 74 in Lansing along the lake out near Lake Michigan, lower 70s there. Otherwise, our low temps tonight will bottom out in the middle 60s, so still staying rather warm through the overnight and early Saturday morning. Our temperatures again overnight will dip to the 60s, still very much manageable and then we'll see those numbers quickly warm up through the day tomorrow. We're drying quiet right now across the Ohio Valley, upper Midwest and the Great Lakes look quiet as well, although we do have that outside chance of seeing a shower develop through the afternoon tomorrow. I would still make those plans outdoors. Just have a radar in your back pocket so you're able to track out some of these thunderstorms that do develop nothing severe. There'll be quick hitters too, and it's mainly in central and western Michigan, but don't be too surprised if we see that isolated shower pop here in the Detroit metro area tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, we do manage to see a very dry day. 89 degrees tomorrow, still a hot one, still a little stuffy for spots, but humidity levels still not sky high by any means. And then by Monday, we see our next opportunity for some rain. Again, very isolated in nature, nothing really widespread coming out of that either. This weekend, 89 degrees, a little cooler on Sunday 82 with a mostly sunny sky and as we look ahead towards the extended forecast our numbers do eventually get closer to the seasonal high especially through the middle part of the week Wednesday 75 we're nearing 80 by the end of the week back to you guys we need a little bit of that rain to wash away the pollen a in little the air, bit right? definitely kind of clear things some things up well scary moments for passengers on board a flight from Paris to Detroit an unruly passenger forced the plane to make an emergency landing Delta flight 97 landed in Newfoundland Canada this afternoon we're told the crew tried to restrain the unruly passenger but he broke free and other travelers stepped in upon landing in Canada the Mounties stepped in and arrested the passenger Nicholas Fougere was on that flight and spoke to Fox 2. We knew that something had happened, but didn't think that it was that serious for someone to have to be taken off the flight before getting to to the final destination. You know, there was a little bit of worries, you know, wondering, okay, what what actually happened for it to be that bad? As, as he was being taken out of the plane, he kept saying like, oh, um, you know, I, apparently I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm a threat to everyone on this plane. Uh, I, you know, being a little bit sarcastic about it. Well, nobody was injured. The flight landed safely in Detroit later this afternoon. Well, a murder investigation is underway right now in Highland Park. A body was found in a room at the Woodward Inn on Woodward near McNichols. The victim is Asia Davis, a transgender woman. Witnesses say the victim appeared to have been shot. It's not clear if she'd been targeted. Michigan State Police leading the investigation. A tragic accident involving a DDOT bus claiming the life of an elderly woman. We're told the bus hit the woman at the intersection of Griswold and Congress near the Guardian building around 8 this morning. The circumstances of the accident are not being released at this time, but the city says a full internal investigation is underway. The bus driver has worked for DDOT for 26 years. They will not be allowed to drive 
while this investigation goes on. We're not hearing anything about a road rage. Nobody's talking about that. Uh, that's part of the things that we're going to be looking at as she followed. A scary scene on the freeway early this morning as someone opens fire on an Uber. It happened around 6 this morning after a woman got picked up from her Detroit home. Police say a dark colored sedan pulled up on I-94 near Livernois with someone shooting the woman several times. She was taken to the hospital and is now in fair condition. Police recovered casings at the scene. A suspect has not been caught. And Michigan State Police releasing new video of what appears to be an impaired driver, but it turns out the reason this person was all over the road is because this person is 10 years old. Apparently, the child was staying with, staying with relatives in the Saginaw area and missed his mom. He took a car, headed south on I-75 to come back to Detroit. Police were able to remotely disable the Buick through the OnStar system, so that was good. The child was taken to a juvenile detention facility. Oh, thank goodness. Well, Just missed his mom. I know, poor kid. Well, it's the latest in the saga surrounding a 5G tower on top of a Wyandotte school. A judge has ruled while a lawsuit goes through the court system, the 5G tower cannot be turned on. Critics of the cell tower have expressed concern over possible health effects. The equipment was attached to the top of Washington Elementary and was slated to be turned on next week after the school year ends. But for now, activation is on hold.